Hey everyone, today another special van. This is a 1991 Toyota Town Ace. It's right hand drive, it's from Japan, and like many of the other cars you've seen on our channel, it is a four wheel drive van. Um, this one is packed with a turbo diesel engine. And this sports exceptionally low original miles. So I'm gonna give you guys a quick walk around here of the exterior, and then we're gonna get into the interior and then some of the mechanical aspects of this rig. Why it's good, why it's bad, why you may or may not want one for yourself. So as you can see, pretty standard period, correct Toyota badging on the front end. Four wheel drive badge lets you know and reminds you that this is a four-wheel drive van. This is an exceptional example. We've seen many of these vans in our doors and there have only been maybe one or two that have been this clean. Um, these vans come standard with 14 inch rims with front manual locking ASIN hubs. We set these up a little bit differently than they came stock. So this one is sporting a two inch lift with general grabber, all terrains. Uh, we've upped the tire size as well to match that lift. And it stances these vans out just right in my opinion. You may notice some similarities between this van and the vans that were sold here in North America from 1984 to 1989. Known as the Toyota van or LE van as people like to call them. Um, they essentially were the close cousin to this town ace. Um, almost identical, a few differences. This is a slightly newer body style with a revised rear and front end. It has a slightly higher roof than the domestic vans we got. And of course, it being right-hand drive and a turbo diesel make it even more a little bit different. But nonetheless, they're very similar vans. They share a lot of the same parts as well. Taking a look in the front here, we have a very nice cloth interior. The upholstery in this van is pretty much perfect. This is a prime example for anyone who wishes to see how these vans came from the factory from Toyota, Japan. So you'll see this has a four speed, sorry, a five speed floor shift with a high and low manual transfer case as well to give you that extra low crawling gear for four wheel drive. This has power windows power locks, power mirrors, power steering. Most of the creature comforts that you would expect out of a higher trim model from the 90s from Toyota. Taking a look inside the driver's seat. Pretty much your standard 90s interior Toyota trimming, um, which is very simple yet functional. If I step inside here, we can take a closer look. So you've got your Town Ace badge steering wheel, gauge cluster complete with tack, water temperature, fuel, and speedometer, which is in kilometers. This clocks in at 51,646 original kilometers, which puts it around right around 30,000 miles and change. shifts nice and firm into gear and then you've got your reverse down there handbrake lever and your high and low transfer case now to put this into four-wheel drive you press this four-wheel drive button here twist the hubs and then you're good to go you'd be in a four high at that point 
if you wish to go into four low, just crank this back and you're in four low. Aftermarket cup holder, as per standard JDM vehicles, they love their cup holders. Well, these came with no cup holders, so can we really blame them? We've got a nice center console here with some additional storage between the two front captain seats. An aftermarket stereo, which has likely seen better days and uh, at this point is pretty outdated. You've got your clock here. We'll see if I can start it up for you guys after I give you a tour of the rear. Um, but for now, fog light switch, idle up switch. Still sporting the original factory plastic covering. This is your steering wheel tilt adjustment knob. Um, and that's pretty much it, you know, rear AC, front AC heat, all that stuff. You've got your ashtray and some storage down here. Um, nothing really out of the ordinary, at least not for me, but I've seen quite a few of these vans. I hope you guys are enjoying the unique features of this because they are cool and I do love documenting them, especially such a clean example as this one. For everyone out there in YouTube land to see and just for the records, just for, for history, because these won't be around forever. They're getting a little bit more few and far between, harder to find in this condition, and just in general. This one has, of course, no rust. Like all the vehicles we deal with, bring in, buy, sell. No rust, no corrosion, no body damage. Taking a look in the back, you will see it sports some very nice wide windows. I would love to have been a kid riding in the back of this with my parents driving, going on a road trip. How fun would that be? It'd be cool to just take a look out the window and see all the sights. Back before cars became bulky and the window lines became higher, the AB pillars became super fat, filled with airbags. Granted, that is for safety, so I don't knock that, but they just don't make them like they used to in some regards. Take a look here. I am facing rearward in the middle bench. Now the middle bench I'm sitting on rotates 360, so we can face forward or backwards. In front of me, we have a split bench, which you can see is split. Half of it is folded up in the stowed away position, and the other half is down. Let's pull this up so you can see how that works. So this back bench is a three-seater, and the middle bench, let me switch seats here, middle bench, two-seater, and a jump seat. Both rotate to face that way or back. Pretty brilliant design. You don't really see cars with these features anymore. I wonder if it's for safety or have car manufacturers just lost their inspiration. Let me know what you guys think. Anyhow, these stow up very cleverly. So essentially you unhook that there. It slides down and clicks right into that floor bracket very simple, very slick. You can almost do it with one hand, almost. So, another thing you guys have probably noticed is factory curtains. Since when do cars come with factory curtains? I don't know. This was a thing that I see a lot in JDM cars. There are quite a few cars that come with factory curtains. From Toyota Town Ace vans, high aces, to even Land Cruisers, I've seen them with curtains. It's pretty sweet. I think a lot of people there do minimal car camping. You know, they'll set up, they'll take it up to the ski mountain for the uh, the weekend, and they'll just camp out in the back of their car. They don't really have a lot of huge, super big class A, B, C RVs in Japan. They do have a few, but they're nowhere near the scale that we have in America. Anyhow, so you have a, even um, a divider curtain here to partition off your front cab from your back. And of course, all these windows open these middle ones slide, which is pretty amazing. And these rear ones, they just pop out. See if I can demonstrate that. You pull this and it just goes out like that. Kind of like the rear windows in like an access cab truck. You can easily open your rear hatch from the inside, which is pretty, pretty brilliant. I mean, how convenient is that? And of course that has curtains across it as well. Um, looking up ahead at the headliner, 
a nice high roof headliner with uh, one and two dome lights. Pretty slick, pretty convenient, um, kind of standard at this point in time, but back then that was a nice feature, uh, just being able to have a little extra headroom in here. You can sit up really comfortably. Um, I'm tall, I'm about 5'11", and I still have a good foot above my head right now sitting in the seat. You've got your rear AC vents up there, and down here we even have rear climate controls for AC and heat and an auxiliary 12 volt outlet or cigarette lighter as they used to be called. So that's convenient. Some storage along the sides here and even an ashtray. You find ashtrays everywhere on these older cars. I think there's even another one here. Yes, there is. So back when times were different. So let's hop out the back trunk. And give you a look in the back, from the back. This down. All right, why don't we go ahead and start up the engine. I'm just gonna close this rear hatch. Give you guys a look at that. And this is finished in a nice metallic gray suits the off-road nature of this vehicle quite well and right along the sides you'll notice there's some really slick period correct decals that say four-wheel drive and town ace so that's you know i miss the days of cars with decals some may call them goofy or gimmicky but i think they hold a special place in my heart at least and they just remind me of a bygone era in automotive manufacturing. So we'll fire this up here. So there you have it. It's kind of a quiet little 2.2 liter 2CT turbo diesel engine. Simple, reliable, if maintained well. These engines are a bit sensitive to cooling, so as long as you keep that water pump changed, the timing belt done, and uh, make sure you keep an eye on your cooling system, fresh coolant, and uh, definitely you want to keep the fuel filters changed too, because with this ultra low sulfur diesel these days, you want to make sure you're watching out for those seals in your injection pump. Other than that, great engines. They chug right along. They don't demand too much. Fuel-wise, they're uh, quite efficient, getting, you know, low 20s in these four-wheel drive models. Good little engines, great little vans. Um, so that's pretty much the walkthrough. This van is for sale or likely sold by the time you're watching this video. We deal exclusively in these types of vans and others, um, mainly Toyota, four-wheel drive orientated vehicles uh, from Japan or North America or Europe. Doesn't really matter, we work on all of them. We buy them, we sell them, we customize them. We even do interior camper builds on these. So if you guys enjoyed this video, maybe you give it a like, a thumbs up, or hit the subscribe button. I appreciate you guys watching. Thanks for checking out this cool van. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments. Um, and uh, always stay tuned for more rad vehicles. Thanks again.